I've come along today to talk to you a little bit about SagePay and the integration that we've been working on with uh, Drupal Commerce. So I guess it's quite a specialist session, so I'm hoping that people who are coming today um, are working with Drupal Commerce already um, and may be already aware of SagePay. Can you just give me a sort of a show of hands, anyone using SagePay at the moment? Okay, thanks. And any, anyone using Drupal Commerce at the moment? Yeah, great, okay. So, and what I'm going to do is just tell you a little bit about something that we've been working on with SagePay for the last couple of months, and a little bit of the history about where we've got to where we are at the moment, um, and then sure. something, a little bit of a case study, and depending on how it's going and how many laptops I can see, a little bit of crowd testing, um, and that'll explain the donuts. Okay. So just to give you a little bit of history, um, uh, at ICOS we've been working with Commerce guys since the early days of uh, Drupal Commerce. We, we, we were working with Ubercart before, uh, back in D6, and when we heard uh, that there was a Drupal Commerce project being set up for Drupal 7, um, we decided that the best way to stop it being a nightmare, or making it work for the UK, shall I say, uh, would be to get involved at the beginning, um, as early as we possibly could. So we worked with Commerce guys on some of the early sprints and planning work, um, and we've been very close with them ever since, really, working with them. But we knew that we couldn't actually use Drupal Commerce without a viable way of taking money. So, much as we were loving what we were seeing, we were loving the way that the Drupal Commerce product was developing, we couldn't even use it back in the UK, because we didn't have a gateway. So again, well, that's the way with Drupal. The only way you can make something the way you want it is to do it yourself. Uh, so that's what we did. Uh, we went off and we uh, we started building the SagePay modules that we needed to integrate Drupal Commerce. So this is a little bit about SagePay. I don't work for SagePay. We're a partner of theirs. Um, they're currently 40,000 customers. in a multi-channel, which means they can also do chip and pin, that sort of thing. Uh, 13 billion pounds settled funds last year, and about approximately 20% growth, and they're Europe, Europe's largest independent PSP. So we've been working with them since before they were called SagePay, and um, they've gone through a rebrand and a, a buyout over the years. So, you know, we, we were very experienced with them, and we made the decision as ICOS that we don't want to be the master of all things, just like we made the decision a while ago to be a Drupal house. We also made a decision that we would specialise in e-commerce, and within that we said, well, we don't want to try and do every payment gateway, because the payment gateways are quite hard, so let's just do one. Mm -hmm. So we, we made the decision to, to use SagePay, and we always promote SagePay to all of our clients if they are unsure of what to do in terms of taking payments. Of course, some clients come along and they've already made that decision, and we have to work a little harder, maybe to convince them. Um, but for us, it's about the quality of the integration with the e-commerce platform you've got. And right now, um, and, and what we've been doing over the last few months, I feel, gives us a really good platform with SagePay and Drupal Commerce with a really tight integration product, which is what I want to show you today. So when I came back from the sprint in Paris, and I knew that we had to build our, uh, our Drupal Commerce gateway for SagePay, well, it was fine, and then we ended up with this situation. Right now, all of these screens represent a different project on Drupal.org. Um, we ended up, because SagePay has these different methods of integration, it has a form-based redirect integration, a server integration in iframes, and also a fully direct integration. I ended up setting up a project for each one, thinking that was probably the right thing to do. Um, and then there's token support, which we'll talk about, and then there's 3D Secure. We also ended up with all these different modules on Drupal.org, which all work, but you need to figure out which one is the right one for you, and there's no sort of one-stop shop to figure out. And much as I understand it, I've got a feeling that it's a little bit confusing when you're, when you're new to it. So, fast forward to, you know, there was a couple of issues with that. We had multiple modules out there, which is a nightmare. We had duplication of effort, so if we were making a fix, someone was reporting a, a bug with one of those modules, more than likely it was going to be replicated across all the others. So it was a, it was a you know, partial implementation of features, hard to maintain, and just generally was not, not the best approach. What we were finding was that 
we were putting in effort into the modules only on what our clients were asking for. So occasionally, um, people knew in the community that we were the ones maintaining these modules. So if they needed another feature that we hadn't done yet, they would come to us and we would, we would do it. Um, but that meant that the implementation of the SagePay UI, uh, of the SagePay integration, was only basically what people had ever wanted. And that's generally the way it goes with open source. You're not going to spend loads and loads of time working on something that you don't need. You're going to spend the time working on the thing you do need. So we ended up with a situation where we had partial features, um, incomplete integration, implementation. So it was all the bits that were there were working, but if you needed this bit over here, we hadn't done that yet. Um, and in inevitably, some of the modules got more love than others. We had a tendency for our clients to either want direct or form-based, but very few actually wanted the, the middle one, the iframe-based one. So that one was lagging behind the other two. So the great news was, um, we've been talking to Sage Bay Road, we're a part of theirs, as I said, and they came to us, uh, well, it's towards the end of last year, and offered to sponsor the development of this module. Um, so Natalia, who's sitting in the audience here, is uh, the partner manager for SagePay. And uh, Natalia and Alberto arranged basically for us to have funding to continue this. So much easier to develop Drupal modules when there's some cash behind it. Um, and so we, we were able to spend a decent amount of time and effort working on this to work on what we've referred to as a unified SagePay module. So it supersedes everything that we did before, taking all the best parts and then finishing the job, basically. Uh, SagePay have a new protocol, a uh, version 3 of their protocol, which has some additional features in. So we were able to, able to meet those requirements as well. So the module now is out there. Um, there's three types of integration you can do with SagePay, and it's important to understand the difference. So the first one is the most simple type, which is off-site redirect, or it's referred to in SagePay as 4. And what that does is when you get to your checkout, you do your basket, you do your checkout, and the very last step when you go to review, you actually bounce away to the SagePay site, you fill in your credit card details there, and then you come back to your Drupal site again afterwards. Now, that's referred to as an off-site redirect. It's the one that is very much the easiest to do. Um, there's a lot of debate, even internally in our team, as to what, what customers prefer. Um, some people like that method because it goes off to a familiar brand of SagePay, um, and some people don't like it because it takes the customer away from your site and breaks the shopping experience up a little bit. But that's one method that you can do. The, the second method is referred to as server or iframe. And what that does is when it gets to the very last payment step, it actually takes the payment screen, like the bit where you enter your credit card, and it embeds it in an iframe within your Drupal site. So this is sort of a, a hybrid of the two methods that there are. And this allows you to... For the customer, it appears like they're still on your site, um, but from a security and compliance point of view, the card numbers are actually being entered at SagePay. And the final one is the what we call the uh, direct or on-site payment <coughs> method. Now, this is the, the one that you would expect with a high-end commerce site. You're going to get to the page, you're going to type your credit card details directly into your, your Drupal commerce site, and then behind the scenes, there's a communication going on with SagePay that's confirming the transaction. <coughs> now that one is the highest level of, sort of security compliance. You need to secure a certificate and these sorts of things to do that one. It's also the most complex from the, from the back end. So those are the three methods you, you need. And we'll be doing various pieces around this work, education pieces about <coughs> which one you should use for your customer. Right, so I've got little screenshots of what they are. So this is the form-based one. This is what it'll look like. So you jump out of your site and you go to a screen that looks very much like that, hopefully without a missing image. And the second one is the iframe. So that's what you would see inside an iframe within your site. So it's very, it's non-branded, it's nice and generic, so you can pass that off as being part of your site quite easily. And then the final one, this is uh, what Drupal Commerce would generate, its own credit card payment form that you can fill in the details on your own site. Now, I don't know how much experience you guys have got with Drupal Commerce and setting up payment gateways in general, but you'll find that the configuration settings for payment gateways are quite <coughs> deep within the settings. 
and they're, they're in a quite an annoying kind of place really. So one of the things we've done with this module is taken all the settings up to their own page because there are so many of them that you can tweak. Um, so within here, I'm just going to show you quickly what this page looks like. And um, you've got your basic settings, which are your encryption key and your vendor name, so the, the basics of what you need. You can then change the transaction stuff, so you can say which mode you're in, whether you're in live test simulation or debugging mode. Um, you can say which kind of transaction it is, and you can also say which card types you're going to accept, all on this particular screen. You can then control what the emails that come directly from SagePay look like, because SagePay can actually send trans transaction confirmations from its site, as well as the ones that you send from your Drupal Commerce site. We can then define what the security mode is, whether we want to do checks on the, the, AV, the CD2, which is the card with the three digits on the back of your card, whether we want to do 3 secure, um, and what other security checks we want to do by default. And then we've got some testing stuff in here, because sometimes you know, with SageBay you have to use a special set of test card numbers when you're testing. So I'll put a little switch in there that stop me having to remember. I can now put any old card number in and it will swap that out for a test card number. So we've got some debug stuff in there. Um, and then we've got an order settings one, because you can send your basket over to SagePay in, in various different formats. So that's the one that, that sets that on and off. And then for the iframe method, um, we've got this low profile option, which is the one that makes it unbranded. So you can turn that on and off. So pretty much everything that, that is possible to set within the integration of SageBay at the moment is covered in these settings. Now one of the things that I'm really happy that we managed to do is what I refer to as secondary transaction support. I don't know if that's what it's really called, that's just what I call it. And that means that if you're using the server or direct mechanism, when you go to the back end of your Drupal Commerce site, you can actually see the transactions. And then once you're there, you've got all these options, depending on the type of transaction it was, you can go in and you can void a payment, you can do a refund, you can do a, a repeat. Um, and all of this you can do directly from Drupal Commerce now. So you, whereas before you would have had to go into the SagePay UI <coughs> and do that as a computer functions in here now. Um, which means that if you're building a more advanced commerce site, you can pretty much do everything. You can do the full back-end order admin experience through this now. Along the way, we've tried to work with the various projects that are already out there. Um, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel in, in any way where we didn't have to. So repeat billing is a function that we've got available to us, and we've in integrated that with the commerce recovery module. And again, that was something that was requested by a client uh, who was doing subscription work and they wanted to make this happen. So we've got repeat billing with Commerce Recurry. We've also got token support. Now, this is, a, again, a sage pay term for token support. And what it really means is that the customer can save a card on your website. Now, for PCI compliance, you're not, you can't actually do that. You can't save the full credit card details. And so there's a mechanism for... Uh, at SagePay where they generate a token which is sent back to you and you can store that. So you're storing something that's not really the credit card number and what it means is that the customer can come along and if you see the little chunk of the screenshot there, instead of saying enter a credit card, it will actually say, it will list the pre-existing cards that you've got. So that way you can enter as many cards as you, as you happen to have and you've got much more like a you know, as I say, a high-end uh, high commerce experience where the customer is really expecting to be able to do this stuff, yet without the complexity of the storing the card data. So what we've used here is the Commerce Card on Fire module, which is, uh, I think, a Commerce Guys module. So we've integrated with that, which already did all the stuff about saving the cards, and we've hooked that all into the SagePay stuff. So, again, we've, we've made out to take some community work that's already done and make it work with this. And then we've got 3D Secure. Now, originally, um, 3D Secure was another module that, that we put out there. And the original intention was that it was a generic 3D Secure module that other people doing payment gateways could use. The reality is that didn't actually happen. So um, I guess most people have either not done 3D Secure or are doing it in another way. Um, so what we've done now is merge that project into this one so that it's all just self-contained. 
And the way it works at the moment is a sub-module of the SagePay module. So if you switch it off, then it will override all the settings so that it's 3D Secure just doesn't activate at all. And it will send a message to SagePay saying, don't use 3D Secure. So it's nice and seamless, um, and, it, and it's all, all there working at the moment. Now, as with any good Drupal module, we've also built API support in here. Um, and this means that there's a big chunk of data that gets sent to SageGo for a transaction. So it contains the order data, it contains all the security settings, obviously the, the transaction amount, and so on. So what we've done is put some hooks in that allow you to change that just before it goes. Um, so the idea of that is um, you can change some of the basket contents if you want to. You can change the security request settings if you want to. So for example, if you wanted you didn't want 3D Secure on transactions under £10, for example, because you felt the risk was low, then you can write your own module to hook into the data to say no 3D Secure if this value is here. So there's, it's really opening up the API of this particular module so you've got full control. So other, other things you might want to do with that, you can do surcharges on uh, different types of payment cards. I think debit cards, for example, you might want to say you, you put a surcharge on that. And if you want to do something like gift day support, which we haven't done yet, um, you can put that in there so that it adds another checkout step and so on. And then the final piece, which isn't done yet, which is something we're working on right now, is rules integration. Um, the idea here is that, in a similar way to the hook uh, and the API stuff, but a little bit more accessible. So we can put rules in place that say, you know, like the example I just gave, if the order value is less than £10, don't do all these security checks. Yeah? Or the other way around. Um, and we can also do, um, for example, the data that comes back to us from SagePay is quite extensive. It tells us about the fraud settings, which bits of the address were matched, whether we had a postcode match, whether we had a CV2 match. And at the moment, we don't do anything with that apart from record it. So what we're planning to do is put some rules in place that you can use that information as it comes back to decide what you do with the order. Because there's no point in an order coming back flagged as past approved, but a little bit risky, if you don't do anything about it. And if there's no one there sitting to look at it, you might want to automatically put that order into a new status that says, you know, do an extra check or phone this customer up. So the reason for the donuts really was to bring you up to date with where we are with this. This module is now out and it's being used. And our first customer on this was Krispy Kreme. And um, we've basically used the direct integration for them, uh, 3D Secure and everything, basically all the bells and whistles. And um, obviously this is quite, this particular bit of their site is not the biggest area. This is their gift site, which we ran up at Christmas. Um, so you could buy your donut cufflinks and stuff like that. And um, this is really a test case to, to prove the concept would work. And um, we'll be building up their other sites, um, hopefully over the next few months. So um, that was really the, how to tie all the donuts and stuff together. And what I was hoping we could do, because that, that's as much as I've got to say, I mean, we can have some questions, but depending on how many laptops I see, normally when I do presentations, I see every person with a laptop. But what I thought we could do is we've set up a test site, which is that short link up there. Um, we thought we'd just do a bit of crowd testing, because it's brand new. <laughs> we released the module yesterday, and if you can be bothered, have a, have a crack at placing an order with one of those test card numbers, and let's see if we can break this thing. <laughs> but you can have the donuts anyway. <laughs> Too late, I've already <laughs> So yeah, it was really a, a very brief uh, intro to what we've done here. <laughs> but if, if anyone's got any questions or just wants to have a general play, then yeah. um, play. Crowdfunding sites like Kickstarter yes. uh, let you pre-authorise a payment and then they collect it later on down the line if the campaign works out. Yes. And PayPal do that with their adaptive payments. Does SafePay do a similar thing? <coughs> yeah, absolutely. So one of the settings, mm, okay. I, I can't I'll bring it up in a minute, but yes. The, the default that we normally use is, is a payment method, but you can also do, uh, what's the actual word for it, is it in a? Pre-off. A pre-off, pre yeah. So you can do a pre-off, which means you're putting a shadow on the credit card that says, are the funds available? And then, again, through the, through the back end, those options that you saw yeah. 
would be different in that scenario. Okay. So there would be there would be basically an option that says now take I can't, again I can't remember the name but take that payment and what it will do is it will let you take take an amount up to the value you pre off. Okay. So yes, it Great. does, okay. um, and that's really mentioned or potentially the rules in the future. So that if it was a certain type of product, maybe if it's a product that's out of stock, you could pre off. And if it's a product that was in stock, you could just take a payment straight away. So there's loads of potential for doing that sort of thing. Yeah. Thank you. The um, secondary transactions that you showed on one of those yeah. screens, are they uh, core e-commerce hooks that you've implemented in sales tech, or are they just extensions that are only part of sales tech? Well, um, basically what it is, um, I've done them in the way that Ryan showed me how to do them. <laughs> Um, so it, they, they all come up in the Drupal Commerce transaction menu. Um, so yeah, they've done the right way, but they're not, there isn't a standard like refund or a standard catch up in Drupal Commerce at the moment. Mm. But what I've tried to do is look at how they've done it, how Commerce Guys have done it in a couple of other modules and try and be consistent with that. So even if there's not a published standard, we try and follow on. Because there's not many gateway modules that I was far developed as this that I can tell. Um, that's what when I was looking for how to do the refunds and stuff, it was only like authorised.net was really the only one that had done <coughs> that step. And what I can try and do um, this is a very basic test site obviously. Um, what what is quite interesting is that Whenever we make an attempt at a transaction with this module now, we record that attempt. So when you go to, this is actually using Commerce Back Office to make it slightly prettier. Um, but when you go to the payment, payment screen, I should pick one item that's actually got some connection there. Let's go to the end of the list. Okay, so the idea is that it records a transaction against every attempt that's made for a payment. Um, so if you, even if you get a failed payment, you can see it, you can see why. So for example, if someone had completely been hacking around trying loads of different cards before they got their order through, you'd see against that order a big stack of declined transactions before there was a successful one. And that might be the sort of thing you might want to look for. Um, depending on the type of transaction, you'll get different options on there. Here, there's one. But. So up here, it will show a status of pending, which means this one's actually a partial. Uh, it's some stuck in 3D secure mode, and the person there, that was me obviously, didn't finish the order. Um, but still, I can actually go in here, I can view that, and I can see various pieces of information about it. And depending on, I'm just trying to decent that, but, uh, let's try that one. Just yeah, so this one's got two different transactions against it when I was testing the server integration. And they're both set to pending. And uh, let's go for that one. I've got decent memory enough to think think of which one it was. Um, let's just quickly go in here and I'll show you something for real. So anyway, yeah, it basically depends on what type of transaction it was as to what options you get. So you'll get a release or you'll get an uh, unauthorized or a void. Because all you, you can also set deferred payments in this, so you can set up a payment to happen at some point in the future, um, and therefore you've got the option to cancel or abort that payment before it happens. Hi. I have a question. Uh, what was the biggest challenges of integration uh, such pay with Drupal Commerce? It's API, uh, Commerce internals, because I have a uh, task to integrate uh, a new, uh, let's say, uh, payment gateway with Drupal Commerce. Yeah. And what is the biggest 
Oh, um, difficult, the most difficult part? The, the, I would say probably the lack of documentation mm -hmm. that's available, for, not for Safeway, but for Drupal Commerce payment gateways. You, you very much find yourself having to look at other ones to figure out how it's been done. And <coughs> the trouble with that is they're all done to a very different standard. Mm -hmm. So my, my way of approaching it really was to work on the ones that I knew Commerce guys had done, for example, assuming that they have obviously know how it works. Um, and hopefully this one will now be a pretty good reference for, for other people to look at and say it's got pretty well developed now. Mm -hmm. um, getting redirection payments right, it was tricky at first until I understood how it worked. Mm -hmm. um, and other than that, I think, um, I don't think there was anything, most of the bugs, it was just usual debugging, getting a, mm -hmm. With the API for SageBay, it's case sensitive. And getting a, I spent all day yesterday with a capital X where I should have a lowercase x. Things like that can just kill you, but <laughs> <laughs> that's just the programming, isn't it? So. Which, uh, which gateway are you looking, looking at? The global connect. Okay. So, what other payment gateway systems are there apart from SageBay and Beyonds? Well, um, Drupal Commerce. We also have worked with Skrill, um, which is the old money bookers. Um, we've got PayPal, obviously, is out there. Authorize.net um, has been pretty well developed, but I think that's only US. Um, Worldcom? E, Worldpay. Worldpay. Yeah, Worldpay. Um, I don't know how far that's come. I tried to use EPDQ the other day and it was pretty bad. It didn't work very well for us. Um, and that's generally, as I say, why I steer people to where I know. Um, but I think, I think Worldpay. Uh, is out there as well. I mean, that's actually one of the biggest ones. Um, but we've not personally worked with that one lately. So I don't know how good that is. Hello. Do you recommend using um, Secure Certificate for the iframe implementation? <coughs> um, we do. I don't think you have to. But generally, for customer, customer <coughs> expectation and customer comfort, any e-commerce site you really need it to sell on now. Because the customer, especially in the iframe scenario where you're basically pretending that the card is being installed on your site, the customer's going to be a little bit confused about that. Um, but it's, it's not a requirement. It's not a requirement, yeah. no. Okay. no. In fact, actually, that was... Yeah. <laughs> to go back to the previous question, that was probably the hardest part, was working with iframes and being able to jump jump out of those iframes when we got the order confirmations back. That was a bit of a pain. Um, we've done it, but I'm, I think there might be a better way. It's, it's a bit JavaScripty. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but I figured that the iframe wouldn't have worked with that JavaScript.